Hello there and welcome. I've got a lesson here for you that is worth its weight in gold. You know, Joseph Campbell, he taught so many great lessons. But he said one time, the cave we fear to enter holds the treasure that we seek. Have you any idea how many times fear has caused people to back away from what they really want? Little boys afraid to ask a little girl to go out. A little girl is afraid to ask a little boy to go out. A person wants to apply for a better position, but they're afraid they might get turned down. They've saved the money and they really want to get the car of their choice and fear causes them to back away. They've dreamed of moving to another city and fear causes them to stay where they are. Do you know, fear has been known, James Allen said, to kill a person quicker than a speeding bullet. It is without question the most destructive emotion that we can be involved in. I'm going to show you something here about fear. It's called the terror barrier, but I want to lay a foundation for it. Now, some of these concepts that I'm going to explain, you've probably seen me explain before. But I found a long time ago, and hopefully you have too, that it's the repetition that creates awareness in our mind. We hear the same thing two or three times. Remember when you were a kid in school, and the teacher would be explaining a, a problem in mathematics, and you're just not getting it, so they may give you some personal tutoring. They'll say, okay, Bob, now here it is here. And they explain it. Now they say, no, you do this one, and you're stuck. And then they do it again, and you're stuck. And then all of a sudden, oh, now I see. Now I see. Now I see. Now I have a greater degree of awareness. Do you know that awareness is the only thing worth seeking? Do you know that people only earn $50,000 a year because they're aware of earning $50,000? they are not earning fifty dollars because they want it. They would like to earn a hundred, but they're not aware of how to do the hundred. Are they capable? Yes, they are. So I'm going to ask you to listen very carefully because there's a great lesson here. Now there is the personality that we're talking about. This is anybody's mind and body. Now we've talked about this on numerous occasions. You have a thinking mind and whatever you think you can become. As a matter of fact, that's the one point all the great leaders have agreed on, that we do become what we think about. This is our educated mind. This is where school has us gathering information. You and I have got a ton of information. We know how to do so much better than we do. We know that there's a gap between what we know and what we do. This is where our intellect is resident. And we have these phenomenal intellectual factors. And if you have not been in a program where I teach the intellectual factors, you want to get in one because it's powerful information. At any rate, that's how this conscious mind works. Now, the subconscious is your emotional mind. And you've got to get it in the emotional mind if you ever want to act on it. Conscious mind has the ability to choose. Conscious mind also has the ability to accept or reject. Now, you see, when we get into the fear, you're going to find that we accept the thing we don't want and we reject the thing we do want. Why would a person reject what they, what they want? Because the paradigm doesn't want them to go there. You and I have the ability to originate. We can originate anything we want. We've got phenomenal potential locked up within us. Now, I have found over the years and through studying this and working with hundreds of thousands, in fact, millions of people around the world, that gaining a better understanding of ourselves is not that easy. It can be scary. We're tapping into parts of our personality that we're not really familiar with. We're causing ourselves to step out into a new area. Now, the subconscious mind, it'll accept anything you give to it. In fact, it must accept, and it cannot reject. Now, that is very, very powerful. Now, here's the key. You, your subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what you imagine and what's real. Now, that is a beautiful concept if we really can get it. See, if you can visualize yourself doing something, you've got the talent inside to do it. Now, why don't we do it? We've got all this information. Well, let's take a look. Here we are here as an infant. Is this the way we are? No, not really. This is how we are as an infant. See, the conscious faculties have not developed. You've just got a brand new little baby. I was just looking at a picture of a beautiful little baby, a Veronica and Arash, a couple who worked for us, and I was looking at a baby, so cute. And that baby is just like this right now. That baby will accept anything that's given to it. 
Now, fortunately for Annika and Arash, know what to give the baby. See, they realize that that baby's mind is wide open to everything that goes on around it. Now, that's the way you were, and that's the way I was as a child. Our subconscious mind was filled with whatever was going on around us. Now, if you weren't born into a super productive family, a very creative family, odds are you've got some ideas in there that you've got to get rid of or you want to change. You see, that's where the image of you was formed. You have a self-image. And it's this self-image that really keeps us locked into where we are. It's also the concept of the self-image that will cause us to go to where we want to go. Now, I have another video that we send out where we cover self-image, and you want to get into it, look for it, because it is very, very powerful. But you see, the self-image is just part of the paradigm. Paradigm is the same as culture. Culture is nothing but group habit. Paradigm is a multitude of habits. So this is the way we're programmed in our little life. We're programmed to like the food we like, to do the things we do, to speak the language we speak. Our perception is controlled in this area at a very early age. So here we are now, today, and we are getting inundated with information and we have a reasoning factor, that's one of our intellectual factors, what gives us the ability to think. We have the ability, <coughs> with our thinking mind, to reject everything we don't want to hear. Now, if the information that's coming at us is not good information, if it's not creative information, we should just tell it to get out of town, get lost. But we don't do that. Why don't we just say, get out of here, turn it off, originate good information, because we don't because we're programmed to live like this. And you'd say, well, this is absurd. People don't go around like this. Well, unfortunately, they do. Now, don't take my word for it. Start paying attention to the people around you. Start listening to the conversation. I call it the chatter of the masses. There's noise. That's what words are, noise. There's no brilliant concepts being discussed. You'll find one or two people off in a corner, and they're into something really creative. But the average person's not. Now, we are programmed to live the way we're living, and that's rather sad. Here's the concept here. We point out school gave us valuable knowledge. However, school never taught us how to alter the old paradigms. Therefore, we, don't, we frequently don't do what we already know how to do. Now, I've talked about this on many occasions. You're going to find people with superior knowledge. They may graduate right at the top of their class and they may ace all of their exams. They are smart. They've got degrees coming off the end of their yin-yang. I mean, it's, they are brilliant people. But their results, they're not a reflection of how smart they are. Now, for many, many years, that really puzzled me. I thought, how can they be so smart and get such terrible results, like appear so stupid? Well, it wasn't stupid, it wasn't smart, it was paradigms. You see, the person that's got the superior knowledge and the inferior results, those people are very confused. Here's the concept here. Here's the graphic illustration. Remember I said that's the educated mind? That's where school has us gathering the information. And if you read the book and you remember what's in the book and you're going to repeat what's in the book, you pass the exams. That doesn't mean that you are going to get the results. See, your results are going to be determined by your paradigm. The results have always been determined by the paradigm. If you come to work with me, one of the first things I'd ask you is what's the most you've ever earned in a year? I don't really care what the answer is, but I want to know because I want to know where your paradigm is, where your mind is set, because if you're going to work for me, I want you to do better. I want you to achieve all of your dreams. I want you to do phenomenal, and I want to help you do it. So you see, I would be focused on helping you alter your paradigm, and when you alter a new paradigm, you change your results. Okay, now we're at the point we want to get at. See this line? That's called the terror barrier. Yeah, jumping at you, isn't it? And on the other side of the terror barrier is something we call freedom. And you know, very few people get through that terror barrier. It's rather sad. Freedom is available to everyone. There isn't anyone that cannot live the way they want to live. See? Why don't they? Why don't they? They don't know. 
and they don't even know they don't know. Now, I'm going to show you why people experience buyer's remorse when they buy something they really want, and then they back away, or they go to move and they don't. They go to change jobs and they don't. They go to move to another city and they don't. Why? Fear causes them to stay where they are. There's the individual. The X represents the unknown factor, the paradigm. Now, there's a power flowing into this individual's mind, and they can make anything out of it they want. Remember we said we had the ability to choose? What do they choose? They choose thoughts that are in harmony with the paradigm. Now, here's an important point. The paradigm controls the vibration of this thing we call our body. Our body is a molecular instrument. That's really what it is. It's a mass of molecules and a very high speed of vibration. The vibration that the body's in, on a conscious level, we call feeling. When a person says they feel this way or they feel that way, what they're really doing is describing the vibration they're in. Now, they choose thoughts that harmonize with the vibration they're in so they feel comfortable. They may not like the results, but they're comfortable. Now, let's move ahead. Let's take a look here. Those people are getting X-type results and they don't like it. Do you know what the problem with them? They're in bondage. These people are locked up. Do you know, paradigm is like keeping a person in a prison, only there's no locks on the door. They can open the prison and walk out into freedom anytime they want, and they don't. They keep getting the same results over and over and over again. They're in bondage. Now, let's go ahead. Here's the same person. X-type conditioning, X-type vibration. The power's flowing into them. And for some strange reason, from left field, ba-boom, in comes a Y-type idea. What is a Y-type idea? The Y-type idea represents anything that you might want to do that you're not doing. It might be moved to another city, change jobs, sell the house, buy the farm, whatever it may be. Ask the little girl for the date. Ask the guy to go to lunch. Go make the sale. Buy what you want. Go where you want to go. That's the why idea. But as long as the why idea is just in the conscious mind, it's just going to be an intellectual exercise. It's never going to happen. So how do we make it happen? Well, that's when everything goes haywire. Here we are here, same person, okay? The power flows in. And what do they do? They got the why type idea. Now, for some strange reason, they know that they've got to get emotionally involved if they're going to act on that idea. They don't understand what's going to happen. But clearly understand this. Your central nervous system is the most complex electrical system in the universe. The central nervous system is mind-boggling. It would make the electrical system in a supercomputer look like a toy. Now, the second you take the idea from your intellect and impress it upon the subject of mind, that's when all hell breaks loose. Because the body moves in to an XY vibration. It's not in the X vibration. Not the one that we're comfortable with. May not like the results, but we're comfortable. No, on a conscious level, everything's going crazy. On a conscious level, we experience doubt. The doubt turns into an emotion called fear, and that fear is expressed through the body as anxiety. See, that person is getting emotionally involved to move ahead. Do you know what happens? They hit that terror barrier and they bounce off it and right back into bondage. And they're so relieved to get back there. They're back where they're comfortable. They've canceled the sale. They've decided not to move. They're going to stay in the job that they don't like. At least they're comfortable. Now, that's not a very good way to live. And you know something? That's something everybody experiences if they're going to grow. You're going to hit that terror barrier. See, the terror barrier is going beyond where you're at, going to a new level. I'm going to tell you something. When I set a goal, if, if, if it doesn't scare and excite me at the same time, I know I'm going in the wrong direction. Now, I also understand that my paradigm is going to try and get me to bounce back to where I was. It doesn't want me to move ahead. I don't want to live there. I lived there for the first 26 years of my life, and for the last 50, 
I've had a phenomenal life. And it just keeps getting better. And I want you to do the same thing. Understand what I've just said. I'm going to back this up. They got emotionally involved in the why idea. That moved their body into a different vibration. On a conscious level, they're experiencing some crazy stuff. They start to doubt their ability. They'll never be able to pay for it. They, they experience fear. The fear expresses itself as anxiety. And bang, you bounce off that terror barrier, and you're right back. Oh, I might not be earning much here, but I know what it is. Uh, I, I would love to move there, but I'm comfortable here. I think I'll just stay here. These people are acting like they have a contract to live forever, and they don't. Do you know what to do? Say, I'm going to get rid of all that. I understand it's there, but I don't want any part of it. And I'm going to go crashing right through that terror barrier. Now, does that get rid of the X energy? No. The X energy is still there, you see? But at least you're over into freedom. You made the move. You did it. And if you continue to feed the right information into your mind, Keep feeding that why idea. Keep getting emotionally involved in the why idea. You're there. You're on the road. Keep doing that. You're going to find that the paradigm is going to change and it'll just all go away. And you know where you're living? In freedom. You're living where you want to live. Buyer's remorse is when you cancel the sale. Buyer's remorse is when you stop just before you buy what you really want before you go for the thing that's going to change your life and you know it. It's not moving to the other city. It's not starting the business of your dreams. It's not stepping out and betting on yourself. That's a terror barrier that's causing that. And if you don't learn to go through the terror barrier, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to stay right where you are for the rest of your days. That's not a good place to be. What did Joseph Campbell say? So true. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. This is such an important concept. It's a concept that everyone should understand. I want you to watch this particular video a hundred times. Play it over and over and over. And if you decide to step out and bet on yourself, understand this. My company is here. Our people are here. We have material that's here to support you to get to where you want to go. You see, I happen to believe that you are God's highest form of creation, that you have deep reservoirs of talent and ability within you. Quit backing away from the life that you really want to live. Step out and bet on yourself. You're the surest thing in the world. And always remember, that cave you fear to enter, it holds the treasure you seek.